Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dogs. First of all, I wish you and the whole team of Transgroom wishes you a happy new year. Just enjoy spending time with your dogs, enjoy the grooming and just be happy and I wish everybody the best from all of us. To step in the new year, we will groom a toy poodle, Jaslyn, which is only a puppy. Here you see our puppy toy poodle, Jaslyn. Jaslyn is Kitty Ponnet's dog and is bred by Tony Su from China. She's a wonderful dog. We see her a lot in the company and she has a wonderful temperament. As you can see here, Luna as well is very happy that Jaslyn is coming today and trying to take Jaslyn away to go and play. We're gonna try the second puppy clip, although she's still a bit very young to do the second puppy clip. As you can imagine, a toy poodle already has a very fluffy, fine coat, but a puppy toy poodle has an even more finer coat. So I don't really know where I'm starting here today, but let's not wait any longer and just start grooming. If you have interest in the products I'm using, I've put a link down below. You can just click on it and go and see the products. It's very important with toy poodles that when they are very young, at young age, we learn them that the teeth needs cleaning. And today I'm using the finger dental wipes to do this. It's very easy with the dental wipes. You can just put your finger in and follow the outlines of the tooth. And you can also do the inside. And because you have feeling, you can, you know, like with your finger, follow the rounding of the teeth. And it's really easy to do. You can see that the yellow from the plaque is going off with the dental wipes. I would advise doing this two times a week. Uh, it doesn't have to be always with the finger wipes. You can use a soft brush as well. But it's really important the dogs get used to this because on later age, as soon as they are two or three years old, it's going to be very necessary to do it more than two times a week. If you have to start, then they won't let you. They will say, you know, I'm not used to this, I don't want this. If you make them get used to this from young age, it's the best way. Now let's do some ear cleaning. So here you see me using the powder, the ear powder. And I'm also having a pair of finger condoms. And I do this because it's very grippy. The finger condoms like grip the hair very much. And it's also hygienic for us. We first pluck out all the outside. We also do a bit of the scalp. And then the inside I like to do with tweezers. And to do this I like lift the flap. And lift, I mean not really lift, but make it... Uh, stretch the skin so the tweezers can go really deep and then you can take out the hairs that are really coming from very deep. As you can see here I'm not using any ear care because the ears are squeaky clean it wasn't really necessary. What is necessary if you use the tweezers you can wash the tweezers don't forget. I personally like to clean the tweezer with a hard brush to go in between the ribs from the tweezers and I do this either with the ear cleaning product or with Dettol or with other disinfectant liquid. For the eyes I'm going to use the eye wipes, the No More Tear Stain and I'm first going to clean out a little bit of the goo which is hanging in there with the eye comb. Now I'm using the No More Tears with the eye wipes to clean out the hard brown bits and as you can see here you can get some some of the brown off. Since Jaslyn has so much problems with tears, I'm using the stain away here because the base of the powder is clay. This will cure and purify all the brown spots and it will stick to the hair and dry and it will protect the hair from coming brown. The packing from the stain away is very easy. You just have to shake it upside down and all the powder will go and sit on top of the zifter. 
pick up the powder with the powder brush and apply the powder under the eyes or wherever the dog has stains. Now let's clip some nails. So here we are not going to use the nail clipper because Jaslyn has like really tiny nails and when it's like this I prefer just to work with the nail grinder and I'm just going to use the puppy nail trimmer for the dew clothes because they are difficult to reach and we have the puppy nail trimmer so let's use it. The puppy nail trimmer is very easy for the small nails and for the dew clothes because you can just use it like a scissor and it's just a nice little tool to have in the house if you have cats or puppies or like small nails. And as you can see I'm using my thumb with the nail grinder to like pivot around the nail and I'm trying to like round off the nail so there's no sharp edges and the nail is short and not sharp and can't scratch anybody. Let's do some clipping. We don't clip much with the second uh, puppy clip. It's only the face, the feet, the tail and the tummy. So there's not really much to do with a clipper. All the rest is with scissors. I'm using the Heinegger Style Mini uh, because that's like a very nice, strong little trimmer to do little parts of the dog. This is the line which I use to know how far I can clip and here at figure 2 you see the bottom of the foot and I usually use the line just after the big pads and then I turn the foot around and I see the front and this is how I know how far I clip poodle feet. After we have nice lines then we go in between the little feet and it's very easy you just take one toe at a time just follow the lines and follow the skin and just do one toe at a time the sides the top and then the sides again also the bottom between the pads it's important that all the hairs are gone and clean and to do this I like to like take the two uh, outward toes and just turn them a bit and then you can scoop out all the hairs with the trimmer. It's important with poodles or any poodles actually, not only toy poodles, that they get used to the trimmers between the little feet as young as possible. And if you don't do it yourself, it's important you go to the groomers as soon as possible and you go regularly so they get used to the clippers between the feet. Once you start scissoring, we comb like all the hairs down and then we scissor the bevel and it's not going to be a problem for making it nice and neat if you have a straight, clipped a straight line with the trimmer. It's like very, very important you go in between with the clippers and you go on top with the clippers and on the sides but you don't do this with the clipper because if you do this it hurts and the dogs will not like this very much because it does hurt. You can test it on yourselves preferably and then you will see that it hurts when you do that. So the, the trick is you go with the little trimmer, you go until in between the toes and then here when you are that far you stop and you do then the other side and you go until the end and then you stop again. You don't do that. The bottom part you can just go with the flat uh, blade like this and you just have to be careful here with the little uh, skin which is when you open the toes which is very very narrow and the problem is the skin is so narrow it can go in between the two blades and you can hurt the dog. It's very important when you choose yourself the clipper that you're using and the blade that you take the, the blade with the most narrow teeth you can find so that the teeth are very very narrow next to each other and there's not a big spacing in between the teeth of the blades. That makes when you go like into little toy dog's feet that the teeth from the blade is so narrow you can't clip or you can't hurt the skin. 
I've changed to the style MIDI because the style MIDI has settings to make the hair a little longer and here for the face I'm using the style MIDI at the, the middle setting so it's not the shortest, it's not the longest, it's the middle setting. I like to have everything under the ears very clean and I also like as soon as I'm approaching his mouth like to push the mouth really down because I don't want his tongue any way, any time out of the mouth so I keep the mouth as, as closed as possible. Here you see me stretching the skin under the chin so I can easily clip off the hair here on the lip and when it's stretched you can reach it very nicely. On the other side you also see me stretching. Now I'm pushing down the skin and with toy poodles I usually let like here the chin a little longer and that means like it's got like a little bit more chin, it's more chunky. And here for the tail you see me using the mini again because the tail is so tiny and the hair on the tail can go very short anyway so I'm using the mini. In these drawings you see everything about the tail. Now in figure one uh, you clip until where the red stripe is there and the circle is the anus. I usually clip around the anus and a little bit under. If you clip with the direction of the hair growth it's going to be slightly a bit longer and if you clip against the direction of the hair growth it will be shorter. And now figure two you see the tail is down and either there I take the line about where the anus starts and then I know how far to shave the tail and then also me personally I like to shave against the hair direction and here you see another picture where you put the tail down and in the figure one you see where the red line is um, I, I also like to make a little V here on the picture figure two you see how far to shave from the side from the profile and there you see like the angle I like to use. Normally I take the tail, I wiggle and then I see exactly how far I can clip. I always do the tummies with the Heinegger style midi because the mini is like too short for me. I use the settings in the middle so not the shortest and not the longest. I usually lift up the leg to start clipping underneath and when the dog lets me I don't mind. If you lift the dog like this just be careful not to go near to the groin with your clippers because in no time at all you can hurt the skin there with the teeth from the clippers. Here you see me using quick fix spray and our new automatic electric spray bottle which is very fun to use. The reason I like to use the quick fix spray is the quick fix spray is like lubricating the coat and it's like easy brushing and I'm sure this way I'm not having any mats before we go into the bath. Now we're nearly ready to go into the bath only thing we have to do is get out the rubber bands and for taking out the rubber bands we are using the band scissor and the band scissor has like a little hook where you can very nicely hook the rubber band to cut it. We don't pull the rubber bands out and we also don't use the hook without putting our fingers in between because maybe we are going to catch some hairs and we don't want to hurt any hair, especially in these very specific areas, which are very sensitive for breaking, and these hairs really need protecting as much as possible. Before we go into the bath, let's make sure we definitely have no mats. And here you see me doing some line brushing. Line brushing is just where we create a line and we centimeter by centimeter we go up and we take a little hairs at the time and we make sure the whole dog is brushed like this. Mm -hmm. 
we're all set to go bathing and today we are using Hydra products. On the bottle from the Hydra products everything is very nice explained and the first shampoo is the whitening shampoo and is concentrated 1 to 10. Normally in the salons we always use the mixing bottles but now such a small dog like Jaslyn we are going to use the indicators on the bottle and we are just going to use the measurements here 1 to 10 so 1 part shampoo and 10 parts water. It's always best to use first the water and then the shampoo to have not much problems with foaming up and not seeing exactly what you're doing. Just squirt on the shampoo all over the dog. Don't over rub with a puppy in a second puppy clip because of the hair, the long hair. Just don't go round rubbing. Just do this a bit, push it all more nicely down. Do that again, but don't make a lot of round movements. Also the head around the eyes nicely. Shower again. Make sure all the shampoo is rinsed off nicely. Then for the second shampoo we are using the volumizing. The volumizing is concentrated 4 to 1. So 4 times water and 1 time shampoo. So here I'm calculating on the index where I need to go with my water to make sure it's nicely diluted. This is the same, just put all the shampoo everywhere and then you can start washing and rubbing and massaging. As you can see here, when I'm rinsing the head, I like to lift up the nose and go around the, no the nose and I rinse the head the first part. So when there is a little shampoo next to the eyes or even in the eyes, it's straight away rinsed out. Here you see me applying the Hydra Intense Volumizing Mask. I chose this mask because it's highly nurturing and it's also going to give me volume. As you can imagine, Jaslyn is now 14 months old and she's like having changing her coat over to a grown up coat and she really needs to have an intensive mask so this nurtures all her coat and gives hydration and then I'm or Kitty Ponnet is going to have less problems with mats. As you can see here I'm applying a lot of conditioner just because of Jaslyn her coat condition for the moment and I'm not saving any conditioner, I'm just making sure it's everywhere and it's nicely massaged everywhere and she can only have advantage. We leave the conditioner normally for five minutes so the conditioner can do its work and the hair can be fully penetrated with the hydration of the mask. And so Jaslyn doesn't get cold, we use the dry dude. It's time for some rinsing now and all the ingredients which the hair and the skin needs have been absorbed and now it's up to us to rinse everything out from the rest of the mask and we have to do this perfectly so it means we have to like massage the coat until we feel all the conditioner is out of the skin and the coat constantly massaging and rubbing until you feel all the conditioner is rinsed out. Drying the toy poodle is a little different because of the style she has. We won't dry totally with a blaster here and we might not towel dry everything as dry as possible I know I like to start at the front legs and the body I'm going to not dry totally uh, with my towel even. I'm just going to leave it a little wetter as I usually would because we have to take small parts at the time and make sure everything from the legs are totally dried and nicely dried and if we take our time the body might be too dry if we towel dry everything thoroughly so we usually leave some parts like a bit wet 
and then we do small parts at a time. And we do this because we here want to dry with the slicker brush from start to finish and we want every single hair to be very straight. In these drawings I will show to you or try to explain to you what happens if you don't prepare your dog well. Figure 1 is showing like curly hair or just not very well dried hair and figure 2 is like where we scissor that hair and then figure 3 is the scissored hair and what happens when we comb again or after a few days what happens to the hair. This is what happens. So actually when you don't prepare your dogs well and fluff dry the hair totally like figure four here where all the hairs are straight, then you won't have a good finish. Figure five is like where we cut this hair which is nicely blow drying and all nicely untangled and decurled. And figure six is just going to stay like this even if we comb through it or if the dog's been walking around a few days. With the Zeppelin dryer it's very easy, you have your hands free and you can just, with the nozzle, take the air exactly where you want it or even under the dog. And here you see me using the pin brush for the long hair because the pin brush is not so aggressive than a slicker brush. And to start off I, I like to use the pin brush I start off at the ends and then I go to the middle and then I go really deep into the coat. And when the hair is uh, like most of it is brushed then I switch to the slicker brush. And I switch to the slicker brush because the slicker brush is finer and I can pull more with the warm air. And if I pull more with the warm air I take out all the curls. And it's not good you go fast because the more fast you go with the warm air, especially in the winter, the more you have the chance of having too much static in the hair. So don't go too fast. It's very important as soon as you finished blow drying the hair on the head that we put in the first elastic again, otherwise the hair might go down and they can chew it or it can get wet again. And you know, it's very important. So first, the first band again. And I like to just draw the line and then comb and then hold it up to see how far or how narrow it is or it's going to be. And of course, as you can see here, the hair is very, very tiny and it's very short. And Jaslyn doesn't really have a lot of hair there. But let's go and have a look how it would be with the top knot if that would be correct or straight or big enough just have a look yes it would be something like this and that's okay it looks good and as you can see I already have a band on my finger so once it's correct I can just take the band and use it one two and three twists and here we go the first band just take the hairs with your two fingers and hold them and take the rubber band and pull it back. And now we are doing the second one. Here you see me using the electric spray bottle again because now the bottom part of my dog is totally dry and to make sure all the curls go out I like to wet it again before I finish blow drying. So I like to brush in all directions with the hot air to take out as much curls as possible. Here I like to go against direction, pulling all the hairs up with the brush. Also the inside. With the direction and nozzle it's very easy. And here you see me showing her little bones. It's very sensitive so there you have to be really very very careful with any slicker brush you have, just not to go very hard and just not, not to comb all the time or to brush all the time over the sensitive bones. Today I'm using the Utsumi scissors and I've chosen to use the Curve 15.5 and the Yo scissor 
20 centimeter, which is a very slim scissor and very fun to use on fine coats. And here also you see the combs I'm using. Here let's make it very easy to make another band and I'm just gonna go to the end of the head with the bands I'm, I'm doing. It's important that you take the ear, the line from the ear nicely and the hair from the head goes to the band and the hair from the ear goes to the ear. Now let's use some vet wrap. This is a very easy way to protect the ears but also to make it easy for you to scissor around the body because the ears are always in the way and if you use vet wrap you have two advantages. First of all you can see where you need to clip and second of all you can't clip off the hairs from the ears. I like to start in the front but it's for me the most difficult part to get in balance so I like to start really there and go really short to the front. Here you see the line trying to make the front leg as straight as possible and here I'm never afraid of going too short under the ear and at the chest. Slowly a little bit at the time looking, scissoring and here you saw me lift up the front leg, follow the line from the body until the back and here you just have to think about the roundness and it's actually not so difficult just follow the natural line of the dog below so it's nicely round here on figure one you see the second puppy clip and here the second puppy clip with the naked dog below so here I, I show you this because for me the front is very important as you can see here it's like one ball and it's to, to manage this for me the front part this part where you see the arrow is the most important part to start and there it's very short as you can see here after I remove everything there's not a lot of hair there and the front leg is really very straight to scissor the ball, I look at it from the profile, so I step aside and never look straight in front of where I'm scissoring. To explain to you more correctly, let me show you with uh, a bottle. This is round and when you look at it from there, you only see the sides. Now, if you want to start scissoring here, you need to see it from that side and now you can start scissoring this part and this part. So what I do when I groom poodles, I start here and I scissor and then I, I change my view and I change my view and I change my view. So I'm not going to go straight scissoring straight forward. I'm also only going to scissor on the sides, my profile. It's also important to comb up the hairs and scissor again and again and again until all the little hairs that were necessary to scissor are gone. Also the other side, the same thing, combing everything up and scissoring. It's important the front legs are really straight. Isn't she cute and behaving, our Jaslyn, for being such a young dog? She's wonderful. I'm returning to the point, the chest here, the starting point all the time, because still I really didn't like it, so I don't mind spending a lot of time there, but I, I will only be happy once I'm totally happy with the result and not return there. And if I have to return there all at the end, I will, but this point here at the chest is for me very, very important. As I showed you on my drawing, the front legs are not in the middle like 
the hair in the front is very short and the hair on the back of the front legs is longer. So here you saw that very nice. And let's do the back legs now. Everything which goes behind the pads I like to re really make short and then make it around the bevel. All that hair on the front can also be short. I was looking where she, f she bends her leg and then at that spot I really go very 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 short. And that's for me one of the most important places also to make later the angulation. I always finish the back part of the back leg first and then gradually go scissoring to the front part. And as the hair is very soft and fluffy, I'm really not taking a lot of at one time. I'm like taking off tiny parts at one time and combing again and scissoring again. Here you see me lifting up again the leg and you can see where the leg bends and there you can see how the angulation is built up. Here I'm, I'm scissoring the sides and now I've just started the other side. Again I'm just gonna comb all the hairs down and then do the bottom part first, bend the leg where it pick up the leg and see where the bend is and where the bend is scissor it very short and that's my base for creating the angulation. As you can see here under the tail there's nearly no hairs. It's, if, it's, if there's one thing I don't really like it's a poodle with where you leave like behind and below the tail hairs and for me it only makes the dog look longer as it is and I when I groom poodles I always groom the hairs under the tail very short. You saw me putting the comb on the leg it was to show that that part is really like a flat part and the top part is like also a flat part. For me, the angulation doesn't really come from the top part of the back leg, but it comes from the bottom part. Here we go. Have a look and have a look how much hair there is on that hock. It's amazing. And then here again, and have a look on the top of the leg, how much hair there is there. There's only a tiny little bit just to make it a bit round. Whatever you do, don't make the poodle longer as he is by leaving too much hair on the back part, the top part, because for me that's really very wrong. I think I'm going to have to be careful or it's going to be all pink and there's going to be no hair left. <laughs> as Jaslyn is not really a grown up dog yet and the hair is still very fluffy, it looks like she won't have any hair more <laughs> when I'm finished. And now some tail grooming. I've just combed everything downwards, twisted and cut it off. I always keep my finger on the bone and I scissor just behind my fingers so I'm sure I won't hurt the dog. And now the top knot. So I'm just trying to get a small piece of hair from the middle of the top knot and that's going to make even the top knot go more down and it's more going to be like a cap. And I've just taken half of the front and half of the back and there I've taken another band to make it stick up better and more. And now I'm just spraying up and here we don't have a lot of hair but as we do we have to work with what we have. We do the spray up because the second puppy clip is with a spray up and the top knot is all upwards and then we scissor everything 
gradually upwards and everything which is in the way, it's like a drop of water, you know, we can think about it like this. We take just a little bit at the time and we comb it up. And after we spray, we comb gladly up again. And you can use combs, you can use the pin brush, you can use whatever is good for you to make the hair stand up. We do it in lines, so each time you take a little bit of hairs and you comb it up. And then we do it again on the other side. We start over again. And we don't use a lot of spray, but, you know, just enough to make it stand up. And for 14 months, I think Jasmine is not doing very bad. She has a very nice top line, or she's growing a very nice top line. I'm using some extra hairspray to stick in all the small hairs which were coming out of the top knot. And now we can just finish the scissoring, the sides. And here we are taking out the ears and the hair on the ears is nice and straight. And now we just need to finish. And all the hairs which are sticking out from the top line we can scissor now. And here you see the back angulation, very nice. Here you see a finished jaslin, which is probably going to sleep very well tonight. It's not easy for clipping a second puppy clip on a 14 months old puppy, but here you see we made the best we could out of jaslin. Don't forget, if you have any questions, you can write them down below. There's a link from all the products I've used also down below. You can see a link and you can just click on it. Here you see the pictures from before and after. Because Luna was very jealous walking around the grooming table, we thought, come on Luna, come on the table, join us. And here you see Luna also with her Christmas hat on. I wish everybody all the best for the new year. Stay safe and enjoy grooming as much as possible. <laughs>